Hi, I'm Emily. Welcome to my garden. I'm going to show you my seedlings, the things I've planted, all here recently as of April 13th, 2023. I'm gardening in Georgia in the United States. I'm in zone 7B and I'll show you what things look like here the, the week before I plant all of my frost tender plants out. It has been raining off and on today, so I'm just going to show you what it looks like. Everything is pretty wet. Here in the front, I have my tomato tray primarily. In the back are my California Wonder Bell peppers. I got a great deal on these. I bought these from a local nursery. The seeds I had, I've had since 2020, and I had really bad germination, so thank goodness I got these five California Wonder Bell peppers for like $3.50. So those are gonna keep me going and they'll pay for themselves quickly. In the middle here, some of my tomatoes, I've got some Brandywine Red. I have some Cherry Tomatoes and Bella Rosa and Celebrity, all looking pretty good. I was worried they'd be a little too small because I started them later than normal, but I think they're gonna be just perfect next week to plant out. And then up front, I have some more Cherry Tomatoes like the Sweetie, cherry and um, sun gold super sweet 100 and then a lemon queen sunflower which is just showing off i love this variety because it's a significantly sized sunflower like seven five to seven feet and it's multi-head and it's bright yellow so i have saved my own seeds this particular seed i think is one of the ones i purchased but i recently put in some more seeds for more of these because I think I want two or three big sunflowers. And yes, a lot of people like to direct sow. I've just had really good success transplanting. So this guy is just going to go in the bed here in the next week. If I put him in smaller, my roly polies tend to eat them. <laughs> so I would rather transplant. This next tray is my like melon in cucumber style tray. So I have a honey rock cantaloupe finally germinating. This little thing is, is the seed coming out of the ground. But what is already here, I have some uh, cucumbers. I have the Be It Alpha, sorry, Be It Alpha cucumber. And then I have a silver slicer. And then some different melons, um, the Stone Mountain watermelon. See, it's got those crinkly leaves. Let me zoom in for you. The leaves are a little crinkly, so it helps me know it's a watermelon. And uh, my Minnesota Midget Cantaloupe. Those were very tasty. These little sad things here. This is a cucamelon that I think recently just got burned. I don't know. It's, it's not going to make it. I need to just give up on that one. And here's the one California Wonder Bell Pepper that germinated for me. That is <laughs> really behind. <laughs> so... I don't know. We'll just, I'm not going to kill him. I'm just going to let him do what he wants to do. and Maybe he can join the garden at some point. These are some sunflowers. There's some short stuff sunflowers. And they are big, 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 wide, but squatty. And I'm going to put them in some good sun. Last year I put them in a really shaded area and they did not get very big. As tall as they were predicted to be. Back here is another watermelon my Jubilee. See those little crinkly leaves? And I transplant my melons for the same reason I transplant my sunflowers. It's just to give them a better chance against my pests. Georgia has a lot of insect pests. And then nasturtiums. Aren't these just the cutest type of seedling you've ever seen? So I've got cherry rose, orchid cream, and mahogany. My nasturtium germination for the older seeds has not been super great. So my 2020 and the remaining 2021 seeds really are being slow. And I actually just started a second round of seeds because of that. This vibrant green tray is obviously a lot of basil. Some of it's getting quite large and I think I want to plant it sooner rather than later like I may go ahead and plant it this weekend instead of waiting all the way till Monday or Tuesday and I'm going to make pizza this weekend so I'm going to pinch my biggest ones so they can start branching you see right where there's a joint and more leaves are growing you can pinch that 
So I would pinch here. Or you could pinch lower if you want. Give them more bushiness. They smell very good. And then my Strawberry Fields Gonfrina is looking nice. This is the perfect size. I'm glad I started the seeds when I did for these because any, any earlier and I would be annoyed at how big they are. But this will be just fine to transplant. My sesame plants are looking cool. They are growing quite rapidly. I I don't need two of them, but you know, we'll see. Got two. They're going to be two to three feet tall. And then back here, I have some dahlias that I started from seed. Two of them have these dark purple stems. And because they're from seed, I have no idea what they'll look like. So one of them has a green stem. And it is really branching out. I've heard you can pinch dahlias, so I'm thinking about doing that. We'll, we'll see. Maybe I'll pinch like one of them and leave the others alone. Now I'm going to take you to my last two seedling trays. This one, mostly flowers. So, there's obviously lots of zinnias. I, I might up pot them before I plant them out, or I might just plant them out. I'm not sure. My marigolds starting to put on their second, well, their first true leaves really well. Some of them are thinking about putting on their second true leaves. And then I've got some sunflowers, the sun gold sunflowers. They kind of have that teddy bear fuzzy look to them, and they were multi-head. I really liked them. Some germination did not happen. These are some of the older nasturtium seeds. I'm disappointed that those seeds didn't germinate, but I'm glad I went ahead and used them up. And then the Kilimanjaro marigolds also had really poor germination. Those seeds were two years old from botanical interests, and usually my botanical interest seeds do great. So I think that pack is just, was just not good. So I do have a second pack of Kilimanjaro marigold seeds from Botanical Interest, but from a year later. So I have lots of them. I'll just keep sowing them. They're white, so it'd be a nice contrast to all my yellow and orange marigolds. I have a lot of Cracker Jack blend. They're bright orange, bright yellow. And um, otherwise, I have one of the only lavender that made it from winter sowing. This is a Munstead lavender. He was looking okay the other day, but these leaves are turning brown at the bottom. So I am not sure if he will make it. And then I have some parsley. This one's looking kind of weak, but this one is looking pretty good. I had a parsley deficit last year. I did not grow enough. Oh, and look, another one just germinated. That is funny. Well, good. The more parsley, the better. So we're going to walk around here. Uh-oh. Okay. So on this final tray of seedlings, I have a few oddballs. We've got another tomato. This is where my super sweet 100 is. I only have one of them left. I have a couple sweetie tomatoes that germinated way later than the main one, so I just up-potted them recently. I don't know if they're growing as quickly as they should. I'm thinking, like, surely they didn't get stunted. But they germinated way later. Like, the sweetie tomato was almost this size, and then those two germinated. <laughs> like, this little guy's tiny, tiny first true leaf. We'll see what they do. These are my peppers that I started this year. They're a little pale. I gave them fertilizer just a couple days ago, so I think they will darken up here soon. But mostly it's, it's banana peppers that are sweet, it's lessia peppers that are a sweet bell type, and then I have a couple pepperoncini peppers too. And here's my other cucumelon that is not looking good. I usually do so well growing cucumelons and it's hilarious to me that they're acting up this year, but you know, it's okay. To this year my goal is for everything to be really easy and not stressful, so I guess I just won't grow cucumelons. And then these are spicy globe basil. They are cute, round, bush-shaped basil plants. 
and I haven't pinched them yet, but they kind of look like they're already bushing out. And then next to that, that, I have all the seeds I just sowed. So I sowed a bunch of new nasturtiums. I sowed a zucchini, Black Beauty zucchini. I haven't grown that in a couple years. I'm jumping back on the zucchini boat. And then I started some more melons that hadn't come up. So I got some sugar baby watermelons, the bush variety growing. I had good success with those last year. And then I started in another Honey Rock and Hale's Best cantaloupe since my first couple seeds did not germinate. These are more nasturtiums. This is my best lettuce patch. Thank goodness one of them is working out. I've tried, this is my third try for lettuce for the spring, but these are going to do well. I have some Marvel of Four Seasons lettuce looking so good. Some Black Seeded Simpson. I have some of the oak leaf which did not germinate super well this time it's from 2020 so the seeds are getting old and then i have some arugula which is doing so great this is really refreshing to see i'm glad i just kept trying because <laughs> i haven't had any lettuce yet this spring but i think in a couple weeks we will have salads from the garden i do want to thin but what I've had success doing is I've been had success digging out some of the seedlings and then just planting them elsewhere. Especially since I've had a tough time getting lettuce going, I don't want to just throw it out. And then funny enough, back here, I have a beet from fall. One of my beets germinated. I don't know what kind it is, but that is definitely a beet. Next to some bolting cilantro. I've been cooking a little bit with cilantro, but my husband honestly doesn't love it. Like he has a threshold that he can do. And then if there's just too much at some point. So this is one plant. We're never going to need all this. I don't even think I'll preserve it because he really doesn't like it that much. And then over here we have some snap peas. These are sugar daddy snap peas from botanical interest. They took their precious time getting germinated. I had to plant three rounds to fill in this, this, this fence line here. And finally, I have plenty of peas growing, so I'm just trying to train them onto the strings. <laughs> These strings are from different seasons. I didn't even have to put new string out this year because I've grown peas enough times. But I have had some aphids. So the aphids are here. I'm not seeing any right now. I'm hoping that rain knocked a lot of them off. And then I have a parsley that survived the super, super cold snap in December where we got down to six degrees for a couple days. And I'm sure, I'm sure it's gonna bolt. These leaves honestly look spindly and small to me. So I think it may already be bolting. We'll see. Yeah, that looks like flower stock to me. That's okay. That's why I started new, new parsley because I honestly didn't expect any parsley from last year to do anything. So I'll show you my container garden. A couple things that died, I think I'm officially calling dead now. My lavender from last year did not survive the six degrees. So they are looking dead, but that means I'll have this nice big pot to put something else in this year. My Alma fig is really coming back with a vengeance. Lots of green leaves. And I'm getting green leaves all the way up the stem. So a lot of that stem is alive. I bought a rosemary because my rosemary died in the freeze. And I wasn't sure if it was dead until like March. So it was not going to be realistic to start seeds for it. Some lemon balm that self-seeded and is looking so good. Some mint in there in that blue pot. Common mint. It's not looking so good. So I, I'm glad I started more seeds for mint. A bachelor button that reseeded. Some more lemon balm because I want two pots of it this year. Some of my Greek oregano, which is just so pretty. I feel like this is decorative. And my chocolate mint. I really want to cook with, not cook with it, but like slice up some berries and throw this on there. Because it actually does smell like chocolate mint like a peppermint patty and then this is my new fig my birthday fig 
I like the idea of container gardening with figs right now so I can have some fruit but take it with me if we move. This is a Little Miss Figgy variety and the nice thing about this is it's container friendly. It's a dwarf fig and it had all these leaves on it when we bought it so they, the nursery must have protected it from the, the freezes we've been having in March. This is some mint that I started from seed this year, common mint. And it's looking healthier than the other mint, so we've got that. Bachelor buttons. Here's some transplanted parsley. None of my parsley looks super happy this year, so I've, I've been trying to fertilize it with some nitrogen to help it out. I think once it gets going, it'll be good. It just needs to get going. Some chamomile that reseeded. <laughs> more chamomile that reseeded so they have their own pots and then my sage is thinking about blooming and it has been just thriving I didn't know how bad it looked in the winter until it really greened up so here I have my first round of beets and I'm gonna to tilt this it goes all the way to the end of the bed and they are looking so good. They have doubled in size. They have been good about standing up even after big rains. And some of them, like these, are just looking so healthy and the stems are thickening up. I think this round of beets is going to do well. And I've been so tickled. Some of them have germinated in the soil since transplanting. Like I have some little patches that I did not transplant. They just were in the soil from the pot. So I feel like I'm getting more beets for less work. <laughs> I'll show you my other little beet patch. I did a second round of beets because I liked them so much last spring. And I transplanted these this week, like two or three days ago. And they are also looking they're also looking pretty happy. I think with the rain, they, they're weaker, so they're having trouble standing up. But they will just have to get used to that. So the, like a third of this bed is my second round of beets. This is my shadiest raised bed, but it does well for peas. So I really went heavy on peas, and they're just, I mean, they are just doubling by the day. I've had a few aphids back here, but not as many as on my full sun bed. Here are some more peas. These are all snow peas and they're all looking healthy. That white striations on them I think is normal. I've seen it before on this variety. I've got a bachelor button plant there that has started blooming. A couple bachelor button seedlings that somehow survived the trauma I put them through. I have a couple dill seedlings right there and a borage seedling. But here in the middle, I have some lettuce. And this lettuce was put through some rough times. It got down to the mid 20s shortly after they germinated. And I think that really delayed them. It even damaged this arugula. I planted a line of arugula right here and most of their leaves turned purple after that cold snap. So I'm glad I planted more. This is now starting to recover. Now my Merlot lettuce over here is looking decent. I've been fertilizing. This lettuce line didn't do so well, more oak leaf. But now I just know that packet is low germination because it's older. My Marvel of Four Seasons is a new lettuce I bought this winter, so it germinated well. Here's a Merlot that floated over. And then a cat dug in the back of this bed, and my husband scared it away, but I, I actually had the bed covered with row covers for a while too, and that may have been limiting the sun. So this bed's just been through a lot. None of these germinated. The cat didn't dig this whole row, just the back, but none of these seeds germinated for whatever reason. And then this is some bib lettuce. And then um, iceberg. I, I felt bad because I had iceberg lettuce seeds for like four years and I never planted it so you know funny enough it's some of it's doing okay and then another Merlot <laughs> so I've been fertilizing this with nitrogen and it's finally paying off hopefully we'll have two lettuce patches that would be really fun okay so here's the infamous third lettuce patch that 
is not doing so well. This is an in-ground garden. And really, I've barely identified any lettuce. I have some violets that reseeded, I think. But there's some lettuce, there's some lettuce, and then here's some of that Marvel of Four Seasons. And then there's a lettuce right there. But that's okay. I went ahead and got some straw flowers planted. My mom gave me some straw flowers from her garden. They're all loving it out here. And oh, I said straw flowers, bachelor buttons. Here are my straw flowers. I just transplanted these this week too. And they have, they have all taken well. That one's gotten chewed up a little bit. That one was really puny when I planted it. But otherwise we have success on the straw flowers. And these actually can tolerate some cool weather. I would love to winter sow them or, or I would love to also like start them in the fall, have them planted out all winter. My zone can, last I checked, straw flowers can tolerate my zone 7B so they could overwinter. Here's my lovely kale tunnel. Yes, there's kale bolting. I need to come harvest. Uh, but every time I harvest, I just pinch off the blooms and I can enjoy the kale. It's not bitter at all. But all of this was just murdered in that freeze we had in December. And now it is all leafed back out. It's amazing to me that this kale survived the six degrees, uncovered, got killed back to a stick, and then re-leafed out. Speaking of survivors, I have a few snapdragons that made it through the deep freeze. Their neighbors did not, like these were totally uncovered. So these are ones that just died off. But some of them came back from the roots. Like here's another snapdragon that came back from the roots and I am just thrilled to see them getting tall. I think in the next couple weeks I should get blooms. Over here, I've transplanted some more red vein sorrel that I started from seed this winter. So I put three more in. And unexpectedly, my ones from last year not only survived the cold, but have just really taken off. So I actually need to harvest them, and try them out. They're supposed to be a really lemony flavor. And you may recognize this plant because people use it for decorative purposes all the time. You can see why. Here's another parsley that came back from the literal dead, from that big freeze. I don't think it's bolting yet because it's been in the shade. These leaves look like perfect parsley leaves to me. So a little further down from this parsley is the rest of my, I'm calling it my herb bed. There's my rosemary that is dead. Sad, sad thing. I split my chives in half in the fall and, and transplanted half over here and they are thriving. I have some green onion. There's an oregano that was in a pot, but I decided to put it in the shade because I want to use the pot for other things. Some more parsley. That came back from the ground. I have some more green onions. And then I have elephant garlic from like three years ago that has grown back every year because I just forgot to pull it. Because it, ne it wasn't the full size elephant garlic. It takes a couple years. But I might pull those this year. They look big enough. Here's an oregano patch that's coming back from the dead. Some chives that I started from seed. More Greek oregano that is just loving its life out here. This has just grown and grown and grown and grown and grown. My lemon thyme, I'm so happy to see this. It's actually, it actually made it. This whole thing just looks really dead, but we have part of it still alive. And then here's my common thyme. And another parsley. Here's my mother chive plant. I need to do something with chives soon. And then I have some, what is this called? Swiss chard. It's supposed to be rainbow mix and it is, but all of mine were yellow, so. It's growing. It's it's holding its own. I kind of assumed the pests would chew it up and eat it because my fall Swiss chard got really massacred by roly polies. Maybe the slugs will get it. I, I don't want to jinx it. Here are a couple other parsleys that I've planted out here. And then chamomile. 
a wall of chamomile. And it's funny with the petals have tilted in for the day that they open up wide when it's sunny. Thanks for watching my garden tour and seedling tour from mid-April 2023. Please consider subscribing if you want to follow along and have enjoyed hearing me putter about the garden. And otherwise, I'd appreciate a like on the video too if you enjoyed it. Please leave a comment down below telling me how your spring garden is going. Our last frost date is technically past, so I would love to know how close you are to yours. And otherwise, check out some other videos on the channel if you want to see how last spring went.